This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. The Motor City Cobra, Thomas Hearns, is the featured boxer in this edition of the Top 5 Notable Wins series. So let's dive right in and begin by going through a quick chronology of what I personally consider to be the top five notable wins during the tremendous career of Tommy the Hitman Hearns. On August 2nd, 1980, at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, Thomas Hearns challenged WBA welterweight champion Pepino Cuevas. As things were getting underway, both simultaneously landed big lefts. Cuevas was having trouble with the size, the speed, and the strength of the Motor City Cobra. Hearns was utilizing an impeccable jab to dictate the action, and he was often following up with a booming right. Cuevas continued having difficulties in round two, and Hearns was beginning to methodically bombard the champion. Hearns rattled Cuevas with a mean right hand and quickly followed it up with another to send the champion down. Cuevas managed to bravely beat the count, but the referee didn't like what he saw and he waved it off. The fight was over. It was a second round technical knockout and Thomas the Hitman Hearns had just become the new WBA welterweight champion. On December 3rd, 1982, at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, Thomas Hearns challenged WBC junior middleweight champion Wilfred Benitez. The action began with a lot of movement and fainting and posturing as both boxers were looking to discover their range. Benitez was using a lot of lateral movement, and Hearns was having difficulty establishing his jab. Even when Benitez had his back against the ropes, the champion was providing a mighty slippery target. Neither boxer was throwing much in the early rounds, but Hearns was throwing more and some of his shots were getting through. It was a tactical chess match where both boxers were exhibiting tremendous patience as they studiously searched for openings. Hearns was deducted a point as round four neared its end. In round five, Hearns landed a glancing right hand that caused Benitez to stumble and touch the canvas, which was a knockdown. The champion quickly regained his composure and survived the round without further incident. Over the next few rounds, Hearns started finding ways to land some more power punches, but Benitez was taking them well. Benitez was also beginning to dart in and out, effectively landing isolated shots and short combinations. Near the end of round 9, Benitez landed a short grazing left hook that sent Hearns down. He beat the count and the round soon ended. Round 10 saw the two boxers trading more frequently, where each was landing some scoring blows but the later rounds reverted back into a technical battle of elite-level skills and ring smarts. Hearns was using his jab effectively and largely in control of the rhythm, but Benitez was still exhibiting good defense and sometimes attacking effectively. Both boxers displayed excellent stamina down the final stretch of the fight, but Tommy was still generally throwing more and landing more, as he continued controlling the tempo of the action. At the conclusion of 15 rounds, it was a majority decision. One judge had it even at 142 apiece, overruled by the other two judges who both had it for Hearns, 144 to 139 and 146 to 137. With the victory, Thomas Hearns had just become the new WBC Junior Middleweight World Champion, officially making him a two-division champion. On June 15, 1984, at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, Tommy Hearns defended the WBC Junior Middleweight Championship against former three-division world champion Roberto Duran. The contest began with both boxers exhibiting deliberate patience. Before long, the action started heating up. 
Hearn staggered Duran and soon followed it up with a monster right hand that sent Duran crashing down. He beat the count and Hearns followed up ferociously and soon had him down again. Duran rose once more and the round was over. Hearns resumed his attack early in round two and soon had Duran in trouble again. Roberto was battling his best, but he was simply being outgunned. A nuclear right from Hearns had Duran down yet again and this time the referee waved it off. The fight was over. It was a second round technical knockout for Tommy the Hitman Hearns. On March 7, 1987, at Cobo Hall in Detroit, Michigan, Thomas Hearns challenged WBC light heavyweight champion Dennis Andres. The action started with Andres and Hearns both trying to get the jab going. Hearns was more accurate with his jab, and before long, he started landing some clubbing right hands. But Andre snuck in a nice stinging right of his own. This pattern persisted throughout the early rounds, where Hearns was generally controlling the flow of the action. Hearns was outboxing, outjabbing, and outmaneuvering the champion, and this trend continued into the middle rounds. Early in round six, Hearns drilled Andres with a mean counter right that dropped him. He beat the count and Hearns had him down again almost immediately. He again beat the count and he was sent right down yet again. Andres got up and he was staggering around as Hearns jumped all over him. Andres was soon down again but the referee ruled it a slip. Hearns resumed his assault, and Andres desperately held on the best he could to try and buy some time to regain his composure. A wild swing and a miss caused Andres to slip down again, but amazingly he made it out of the round. Andres looked surprisingly fresh to begin round 7, and Hearns was looking a bit fatigued. Andres began to rally, and he was landing some punches when he had Hearns backed up against the ropes. Andres was also boxing a bit more effectively in the center of the ring. Hearns appeared to get his second win the following round, and he began throwing more power shots. A wrecking ball right sent Andres down in round 9. He rose quickly, and Hearns continued unloading and the two boxers crashed down in the midst of the frenzy. In round 10, an exhausted Andres fell down again from a cupping right. It was ruled a knockdown, and Andres was really wobbly, which prompted the referee to call it. It was a 10th round technical knockout, and Tommy the Hitman Hearns had just become the new WBC light heavyweight champion, making Hearns a three-division champ. On June 3rd, 1991, at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, Thomas Hearns challenged the undefeated WBA light heavyweight world champion, Virgil Quicksilver Hill. The action began with a tentative feeling out process where both boxers were sizing each other up. Things quickly evolved into a battle of jabs. Hill was utilizing a lot of lateral movement and looking to fire his jab when he maneuvered into a favorable angle. Hearns was patiently pressing forward and he was throwing a jab that was just as fast and had a lot more oomph behind it. As the early rounds progressed, Hill was becoming a bit more stationary as the two boxers continued trading angry jabs. Sometimes a nice right hand would follow behind it, but the jab was the primary weapon of choice for both Hill and Hearns. During the middle portions of the contest, it largely remained a jabbing duel. Hearns began sneaking in more power shots here and there, but to his credit, Hill was absorbing them well. Hill was also sometimes doubling and tripling up the jab effectively. But by and large, Hearns was landing a heavier jab, and he was also sneaking in a wider variety of power punches. Each boxer was having moments of success when he took the initiative, and things remained competitive. 
In the championship rounds, Hill was giving it his all, but Hearns was landing the far more damaging blows down the final stretch. At the conclusion of 12 rounds of action, Hearns was awarded a unanimous decision with two judges scoring it 115 to 113 and the other having it 116 to 112. With the victory, Hearns won the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, marking him as a two-time champion at 175. Now before I rank these five victories, it's worth mentioning there are a few others worth considering here. For starters, there is the fourth round knockout against Juan Domingo Roldan. That was an exciting fight where Hearns won the vacant WBC middleweight title, and this was historical. Hearns had become the first boxer in history to win a major world championship in four different weight classes. Another fight worth considering was when Hearns scored a first round knockout against undefeated number one WBC ranked contender James Schuler. That was just a devastating first round knockout from the hitman. There might be a few others that deserve mention, but the strange thing here is, in the case of Tommy, the fights he is best known for are brilliant efforts where he fell short of victory. And of course, we have the highly controversial rematch against Sugar Ray Leonard, where most observers believed Hearns deserved to win that one, but it was ultimately ruled a draw in the eyes of the judges. Counting down from number 5, the victory against Dennis Andres. Hearns was exceptionally sharp in this one, and the fact that he earned himself a portion of the light heavyweight crown carried a lot of weight for me here. It's interesting to think that after winning titles at 147 and 154, that Hearns would next go on to win a championship way up at 175. Number 4 is the victory against Benitez. At that time, both of them only had one professional loss against the same guy, Sugar Ray Leonard. Benitez was an elite technician with impeccable counterpunching skills, and Hearns bested him in a battle of tactics, where the hitman injured his right hand mid-fight and still persevered to outbox a master boxer. Number three for me would be the victory against Virgil Hill. At this point, Tommy was well past his best and well north of his prime fighting weight. Hill had made 10 consecutive title defenses going into this one, and he was a highly skilled technical boxer with good speed. And at the end of the night, Hearns was the superior technician, where his heavier hands and ample quickness allowed him to outbox the younger champion in style. Number two would be the victory when he won his first world championship against Pepino Cuevas. Going into this one, Cuevas had been the reigning champion for more than four years, and during that time he made 11 consecutive title defenses. The hard-punching Cuevas had won inside the distance in all but one of his previous championship bouts, and Hearn simply outgunned him in spectacular fashion. And number one, Roberto Duran. Oh my goodness. Such an incredible display of power and destruction. Duran is one of the greatest boxers to ever lace them up, and the brutal powerhouse showcase from Hearns is definitely his most notable career-defining victory in my mind. So what do you think were the top five notable wins for Thomas the Hitman Hearns? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.